Hello and welcome back to Curtis State Tutorials. This is part two of our media queries tutorial. Uh, part one, we set up our document and got it ready. We set up all of our CSS files, including our media.css file, which included our three CSS documents in total that we want Dreamweaver to tell the browser to serve up when the browser hits the device that it's on. So in other words, if we're on the tablet, uh, if I'm on an iPad and uh, the browser sees that it's an iPad, it's going to serve up this CSS document. If I'm on my mobile phone, whether an iPhone or an Android, it's, it's going to see the device size and serve up that CSS document. And so our documents can look different with the different CSS documents, but we can just make one HTML page with three different CSS files. So I did make a mistake back in tutorial number one, and I wanted to change that really quickly here. I wanted to, I made on my desktop CSS my max width 760. Well, that's not good because my header alone is 800. So I want my minimum width here to be 760 so that it doesn't get any smaller than that. And remember, my max width for my tablet is 759. Again, all these numbers are changeable, but this one's important. I want the browser to be able to expand my, my desktop document out bigger than 760, so I had to make a change there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate on these uh, on some of these other documents here. And I'm gonna start with the C uh, tablet.css. Uh, we don't really need to change the desktop one very much, uh, if at all. We just put our header in there and that was it um, in the uh, index file. But what I want to do is concentrate on some of the stuff that's happening in the tablet CSS. So we have nothing in here right now. We're going to add a few things into the tablet. I want to make sure that I have my container uh, rule happening. So again, um, if I go back in here into, and I can just close these down actually, I've got all the documents open right here. So they're all connected right here. And in fact, if I, if I go to my source code, I can see that they're all connected, desktop, tablet, mobile, and then the media CSS. So they're all connected together. Um, so I want to look at my tablet size here. My tablet maximum width is 759 on that, and my minimum width was... 321. So I want to make sure that um, for my tablet view, I want to have, I want to start working on the size of that. So I want to say the minimum width uh, in tablet view for screen size is, is going to be set. So I'm going to do that to my container. So I'm going to go to, I'm just going to copy some stuff out of here. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to copy my container div and I've got I've got some items that are going on within that actually I, I'm just gonna copy my container and put it into the tablet so I'm gonna go here and get my other curly bracket for my declaration and with this one I want to make a min width here that then will um, be at 320 and you'll see in a second why that why that will work so my minimum width for the tablet is there. And then I want to, after I want to do that, then I want to go into my sidebar, because I do have a sidebar back in the regular design. I want to go to the sidebar, and I want to make sure that that sidebar doesn't have a float on it, and its width is 100%. So let's go, let's type in the sidebar. And I could just copy and paste, or I can just... Um, so I can go back to the desktop and copy and paste and just make sure I got the names of things right. So if I go down in here to the sidebar 1, I could take all this information, command C, and then go to my tablet and command V and paste. And on this, I want to make the float none on sidebar. You'll see in a minute. Let's get this kind of going in here. And my width on the sidebar for this document, I want to make it 100%. So the sidebar also has a list with inside it. So the sidebar will, will create that little class right, right there. We could go and copy and paste again, uh, of course. But what I want to do is I want to um, look at my nav bar, this little gray nav bar that's right here. I want to talk about its uh, unordered list. So it's ul.nav space and then the list that's with inside that. And I'm going to put the 
declaration brackets. And I'm going to explain how the CSS is going to work here in a second. So I'm going to say float left on that. So we're saying that when there's a tablet going, that this could possibly float left. Okay, and then I want to make the width of this uh, 50%. So the width, and then 50, and then percent, semicolon. So I've got that going so far. Again, back in my desktop, we've got that same thing, and that's right down in here, UL nav right here, and it doesn't really have that sizing going on. It has a little bit of, of pre-made stuff, but we want to tell it to be exact width for the tablet. So we're saying the width is 50% of the parent that it's in at the time. So if this if the browser size is down, we want this list to not get uh, to be 50% of the size of the parent. And you'll notice that in design view something happens here and I'm kind of doing this so these all kind of go horizontal depending on my size of my browser if I pull this open bigger then we would see this change so that's what we want it to look like at this point notice how the header is sizing down a little bit here to uh, accommodate our sizing that we've got going alright I want to make my content hundred percent as well so the content of the div is 80% back in the main document, back in CSS. The content here is 80% width, and I want to make it 100% on my tablet. So we want it to match the header, in other words. So I'm going to say content, and it's got to be, excuse me, it's got to be the class content, and declaration bracket, and width 100 percent so it'll match the header and then declaration back it to close that so we've got that going on so it looks pretty good so far now let's go on to make our mobile CSS so the mobile is not going to be that much different than this just a few little differences so I'm going to highlight all this and copy and paste it to the to the mobile CSS so I'm going to do that so command V command C and command V and then on the mobile, I want the minimum width. Here's where I can set a minimum width for mobile. Remember how we didn't do it in the media query box, but I don't want anything to get smaller than 200, let's say. That's pretty small smartphone if it's getting smaller than 200. I want my sidebar on the mobile to stay floating none, and I'll keep the background width here. And maybe I'll take away a padding and uh, a padding on here if just. So that does because on mobile I might not need that much padding going on on the sidebar, and then my content I, I keep at hundred percent, and the sidebar I'll get rid of this fifty percent thing going on right here. So that's gonna kind of you'll see what happens here when I when I go down smaller. We're gonna test these all in a second, then I'll kind of explain what was going on. So what I want to do now is right up in up in the top here I can go and test these on Safari I can go back to my main design back to my source code here and in design view test what this looks like up on Safari if I want to but we're gonna use the new multi-screen here in a second so I can test it in Safari Firefox Chrome whatever I want to do and I can see definitely the mobile version or the um, the web version here the browser web version and Notice how when I pull this smaller, remember we have it going to 90% size there. And so the so as I go a little smaller, look how my header changes just slightly and gets smaller. Now if I get to tablet size, so I'm gonna go in here to tablet size in a second. Let me go back to here to right up here on the top of Dreamweaver, I can go to multi-screen preview and I can go to tablet. And when it gets to tablet size, when I get to a, let's go a little smaller than that, you'll see. Here we go. This will be like for a Galaxy tab, uh, possibly. So I've got pop, I've got different sizes in here, and this one will hit the size that we did. We can make our minimum and maximum width a little bigger, and it'll go to that size. So you'll notice my design changes when I get to tablet size. And then if I go down to smartphone size, so if I get down into that size, look at how my design changes even still. So this works really well in that I can take one HTML document and modify it to change the different sizes. And I can see all of them kind of at once if I want to. I can go to multi-screen preview and see all of them. 
Uh, let's see if it will do this here. There we go. And it's going to show them in multi-screen preview. I need to make this tablet this a little bit smaller here. But you can see that my mobile here and my desktop down at the bottom. And then I need to make my tablet size just a little bit different so that it sizes there. But it's going to, you know, sizes it pretty well. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I can change the media query sizes right back, back in here if I want to. Or, of course, we can change it back in our media queries document here. So I could go with my tablet if, if the size is, is too big. Maybe I go a little bit larger on this to accommodate more tablet size. I go like this. Maybe I go up to 770 or something and change that and save all of these. So I'll go File, Save All. And then when I go to tablet, let's see if that changes that. There we go. So that would be more of our mobile. Uh, that'd be more of our mobile. Uh, or excuse me, that would be more of our iPad size right there. So 768, 770, somewhere in that area would would cover the iPad. All right. So what's happening here? What's really cool is the desktop CSS is all the CSS for my the main CSS for my web page. But what's really great here is that I don't have to duplicate all of my CSS in the tablet and mobile. Only the things that I want to change. This is the important point of this media query. Is only items that are going to change in CSS do I need to change in the tablet and mobile.css documents. That's really great. So in other words, I don't have to recreate this whole thing. Let's say I had, I had hundreds of lines of CSS code in the desktop CSS for a really complicated site. I only need to change the, the objects. Um, I only need to change the styles that really need to be changed in tablet and mobile for this to work correctly. All right, so that's part two of our media queries within Dreamweaver. This has been a Curtis Stage tutorial. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon.